Okay, so I have this build that pretty much uh, cakewalks the trials and everything else. And of course, it's a uh, Techno Master build, you know. I've been rocking this build for a while, but I've uh, been seeing a lot of videos of similar things as well. But as y'all know, or may not know, you run the Blighted Turret, Cold Snap, and the Cryo Turrets. So, uh, pretty much I'm rocking all Tech Monger gear, as y'all can see. I just got it decorated so I can look badass like this, you know. Looking pretty nice, looking pretty nice. Y'all know y'all like it. But most people just run uh, the helmet, the chest, and the legs. And then they just have the other two or something random, which you can do perfectly fine. But uh, I decided to just, why not, throw on all of the stuff. So as y'all can see, on my helmet, I got uh, Double Trouble, which uh, pretty much doubles. I mean, well, it puts out enhanced turrets. So the normal turrets are now upgraded. And instead of one barrel per turret, it's two barrels per turret. So pretty much doubling the firepower. Uh, also twins, which means I can throw out two turrets instead of one. Because normally you only get one. With twins, you get two. Then if you've got a blighted turret, like I do, that means three turrets. And then on top of that, I have Anomaly Echo because this build is an AP build. So... You want to boost anomaly power as much as possible so uh that's what anomaly echo is for so it gives me firepower and anomaly power on skill activation and with this one uh as y'all can see it's anomaly cooldown and status uh cooldown is going to be meaning we're going to be throwing the stuff quite often so anomaly echo is going to be activating a lot and then status power uh you'll see where that comes in to play pretty soon uh for the chest plate i got Again, it says anomaly power cooldown status, you know, those are very important. Cooldown somewhat can be changed somewhere down the line, but yeah. I got hazardous modifications. The turret now fires toxic infused projectiles that deal 27,577 more damage and has a 50% chance or a 50% ah, 50 increase attack range. So now it turns the blighted turret into a, from a flamethrower or a toxic spitter. A toxic thrower to a toxic cannon and now it'll just shoot big ass balls of explosive toxic then on that I got danger close because this is an up close and personal techno build I like to be in your face doing damage and this the survivability is crazy so you don't have to you, you don't have to worry about anything pretty much but uh, danger close gives you six percent anomaly power bonus for each enemy in close range and it stacks up to four times so that's a pretty big boost to anomaly power as well. As y'all can see, I think each one of my pieces has something to boost anomaly power. Uh, but also I have reforging bullets, which means critical shots on enemies give them burn. And, well, if I'm shooting enemies that is inflicted with burn, I don't consume ammo. As long as it's a crit shot. Uh, that one was the third row that was pretty much unchangeable. But I figured, you know, since I had a dead mod on the third one beforehand and I haven't had you know, a god roll yet, or, you know, all my gear is not rolled perfectly, but, you know, I can work with that, because it goes hand in hand with this one that comes on this piece right here. Uh, whenever your health drops below 30%, burn inflicted on enemies, well, yeah, burn is inflicted on enemies within a 10 meter radius. Now, as y'all can see, that goes hand in hand with this one, because if they're burned and I hit a crit, I don't use ammo. Uh, and that's going to go back to what my guns is, too, because one of my guns is based on hitting crits to do some other stuff, which y'all see that as well. And let's see, I have improved coolant, doubles the fire rate of the deployed turrets. So that means not only did I double my turrets and double the barrels on the turrets, now I can actually double the fire rate as well. And then I have shatter to just give me an overall 16% more damage against anything frozen because I'm going to be doing a lot of freezing on this build. Uh, the gloves, we got turrets with benefits. So, cryo turrets, uh, deploy turrets, ah, deploy turrets is surrounded with a 10 meter anomaly sphere that grants you and your ally a 15% resistance bonus. Every six seconds, a random status will be removed from you and your allies within the sphere. That one, don't really need it, but it comes with the set, so extra bonus, I guess. 
Then you got Euthanizer, which is a must because I'm going to be doing a lot of Toxic. Uh, you deal 16% more damage against enemies that are afflicted with Toxic. Uh, this gear does come with the version, uh, the level 2, the tier 2 version, which is an 8% increase. So if y'all don't have Euthanizer, that one will still work. It comes with the set. Uh, and my third row just happened to be Aura of Force, which means Critical Shots grants me an extra 35,000, uh, a little bit over 45,000, or 35,000 anomaly power to me and my allies for five seconds. So this is definitely a great support and solo build. And the last is the feat, which is Power Assimilation, which is super, super, super important. I boost my anomaly power by 31,000, over 31,000 for each elite. On the battlefield a lot of the times there are going to be a lot of elites on the field and when pretty much this build does incredibly well the harder the area so harder areas tend to pull out more elites and this will make your anomaly power skyrocket and on top of that we have hell shot which increases the turret damage based on status power which is why status power is on all the rest of the gear as y'all can see, I just couldn't get it to roll on the shoes because those game tech monitor shoes don't roll with it. The foot gear don't roll with status power. But as y'all can see with this one, the gloves and the feet does not run with anomaly power either. But as long as you got status power on most of the stuff, which your gloves do, that's fine. But this also has cooldown reduction, skill leech, and max health. So that's just, you know, it benefits overall survivability. So, uh, Untamed Power is another one that I, I had on my original build and I just got lucky and had it roll as a permanent third one on this one, which is super dope. But this is very important on doing damage. Very important. Because as y'all know, this is an anomaly power build, right? Boosting anomaly power. So, using skills deals 75,913 damage to each enemy within five meters around me and the damage is equal to 30 percent of my anomaly power so that means however high this number goes because at base this is where i am but as we start using all of our stuff and stacking it this number is going to skyrocket and that means that uh untamed power will pretty much one hit like a lot of the smaller and uh medium-sized bosses once you get your stuff skyrocket so that's why this is an in-your-face build you always want to be up close and personal to all of the enemies because you're going to be doing damage with everything it says using skills do it does all that damage so that means every single time i throw a turret a small explosion every time i throw i mean activate a skill uh, like my my cold snap small explosion every time i melee small explosion you know within what is that a five meter radius so you got to be fairly close but that's going to be doing incredible damage so you can just be spamming the melee now to the guns we are using the roaring umbra i got it you know again all of this stuff is transmog to look pretty cool uh and i like how this one looks but it has armor pierce status power close range damage close range damage is really good because uh, as y'all know, we're going to be up close and personal. Armor Pierce is great as well. I'm not going to be using this weapon too often, but I did uh, it roll with Kinetic Stomp. And then I put um, Fortress on it as well, just to, you know, give me that increase of uh, armor resistance and overall damage buff. Like, this pretty much buffs everything, as long as you can get the shots off. And then on that, it has Moaning Winds as well. So mainly this gun is to just run up to him and reload. And activate kinetic stomp and stuff like that but here's the bread and butter gun right here final penance um of course again that's not how it's supposed to look but it has crit damage long range damage and skill leash as y'all can see this gun is and i had uh mods that increase crit damage or just i'm crit damage and this is mage's rage which is super super important on anomaly builds anytime you get mage's rage or if you don't have it you need to have this on at all times because this will really do numbers. So critical shots gain, it gives me 10% anomaly power bonus for 15 seconds and it's stacked four times. So that is 
really good. Then I put Fortress on there just to maintain. Then it comes with Claymore, which just drops an Anomaly Blade on them. And uh, the pistol is not really necessary, but I just picked this one because it has status power and close range damage on it, which is dope. And now that I speak of that, I actually have to increase the, uh, yeah, increase the attributes real quick, like, you know, just to, to maximize the potential in this build because we want that status power. We need that status power and that close range damage. So, we're gonna bump that up. There we go, now we're at 11.3. Also boost this up. There we go, 37, might as well do armor piercing. Why not, that's maxed out. There we go. And as y'all can see, all of this stuff is on there, but I'm not gonna be using it again. I'm just, you know, holding it for the stats. Okay, so. That pretty much is that part of it. Let's go to the skills. Y'all already know. Lighted turret. Cold snap to keep them frozen. And, you know, just minimize the movement so they can get messed up. And then this is going to be the bread and butter. This is going to be doing all the damage in this here, pretty much. Y'all could swap cold snap out with any of these that y'all want. Uh, preferably, people usually go to this one. Here's my tree. Um... It's optimized as much as I think I can get it for this build, but if y'all see some tweaks or some changes, feel free to do it. But I went down low first to get the anomaly power. Resistance Pierce was just a bonus. Uh, and I just went down here just to get these three nodes of anomaly power. That's an extra 30% anomaly power. And then you get increased resistance and resistance piercing, which is pretty good. I also went down this tree because this is definitely a necessity. It's like very important. So activating a decay skill, which is this toxic, uh, the blighted turret, which we're gonna have on cooldown like super, super quick. It gives you an extra 30% anomaly boost for 10 seconds, which is incredible. Then you got this one, enemies below 30% receive 20% 20, uh, 20 more damage, which is again, dope. Then uh, we have increased the max health. Increase the freezing damage. This is important too. Make them a little bit more squishy by 10%. Then I went this way just to get this because we're going to be in the pack tree. We're going to be implying toxic or applying toxic to everything pretty much. So we'll make them more vulnerable and it'll increase that effectiveness by 40%. So it's going to make them even more squishy. So then we just continue following this tree. Skill leech. Anomaly again boost. So that's, well, that's not anomaly. That's a. Uh, max health just for a little bit more survivability another one with freeze uh enemies are with freeze is 20 percent longer now you could like spare something and go down here too i don't think this and this will overlap i might be wrong and then you can get them to be even more squishy with this tree so if you want to you can figure out a way you can take something away from uh somewhere else down the tree and put it into those, I don't really think you need it. Uh, but you just continue this tree forward, you know, until you get all the way to this one, increased healing overall, that's just gonna keep you more bulky, keep you alive longer. Uh, again, more damage to enemies that's frozen. And then this, activating a gadget skill, increases your anomaly power and weapon damage by 40% for 10 seconds. So as you can see, it's cold snap and the turrets that's down there. So you're gonna be activating this a lot. And then upon losing all your health, you will receive a second chance to return to the battlefield with 50% of your max health, which is super, super good. It takes, it, it happens every uh, 180 seconds. So what this means is if all of this sustain just so happen to not work or you make a mistake and throw, don't throw up the turrets or something happens and you are supposed to die, this will bring you back. So it's a second chance to stay in the game. So this is also incredible. This build almost never dies. Like in order for this build to go down, you would have to be doing something like incredibly wrong, like not throwing your turrets at all or not doing damage. So if you pretty much die with this build, it's kind of your fault. But let's go to the packs tree. As you can see in the packs tree, per usual, people tend to go up here and it's a good reason why. 
I was rocking down here with my first build, and I'll show that a little bit later, like an earlier on build. And this is for more like support based stuff. Uh, but this one, uh, you got this initial striker, gives you more anomaly power and well, or firepower, which whatever one is higher. In this situation, our anomaly is going to be higher. So it gives us the 10% for five seconds. This one is lethal devices, which is important, very important. Uh, when you activate any of those ordnance or gadget skills, it inflicts toxic to enemies hit and deal additional 5% anomaly power as damage if toxic is refreshed. So this pretty much is going to apply toxic you know, to everybody, all enemies, everything's going to be applying, to applying toxic. So now the cold snap, the turrets, all of that, it's just going to be put in toxic and frozen. All of that stuff is just going to be put in toxic on them, no matter what. Then you got painkiller damaging an enemy grants you 2% health regeneration for three seconds stack twice. This is just for sustain again to stay alive. Then you want to go to the top tree where you got permanence inflict toxic on enemies for inflicting toxic on enemies has a 100% chance to inflict a random additional effect. So now, not only are we putting toxic on everybody, this is going to give them a random uh, additional status 100% of the time. So when I hit them with toxic, it might hit them with frozen, it might hit them with bleed, it might hit them with burn, it might hit them with vulnerable, it might hit them with weakness. It's all random. But they will be hit with something else on top of being frozen and toxic and vulnerable because that's off rip. Our, our build naturally just does ice toxic and vulnerable off rip. So nine times out of 10, this is probably going to be a uh, weakness or burn or, you know, one of the other ones, but y'all get the gist. Then finally you go to dissection. You deal 5% more damage to enemies for every status inflicted on them. Now you see how this goes hand in hand. So now, this is 5% more damage overall for every status. So you got ice, you got toxic, and you got vulnerable 100% of the time guaranteed. So that's already 15. And now with the additional status, that's four. So 5, 10, 15, 20. So now that's 20%. So then if you have anything else that, it, that can put a status on them enemies, it's just going to increase it and go higher. And as y'all can see, uh, in the build, we have burn included. So now that's 25%. So y'all, y'all see where that's going. That's, that's incredible. Now let's do the final one, uh, the Ascension. I currently have not much. I only have 32 points so far, but you want to put everything into anomaly power first then anomaly damage, then status power. Or you can actually do anomaly power, status power, and then this one. If y'all don't have enough, make sure this is first, and then y'all can just kind of split it between these two if y'all want to do it that way. But then once you get more points, ideally, you want to do damage against elites for more soloing potential. Or with me, I usually do crit chance first. That's where I'm going to go because, again, my weapons uh, are activating my stuff based on crits. So... With some of the enemies, you can't really see their crit spot and hit it. So with this one, it'll just give you a chance to randomly just hit anywhere on the body and have it hit as a crit. So, you know, that's potential. But other than that, you know, I'll have to give an update once I get more stuff on here. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty much what it is. So, enough talking. Let's get to the fighting. So, I'm just going to show y'all a little test. We're going to do... Eye of the Storm and solo it with ease. Oops, I went to the wrong thing. And it goes through the trials like butter as well. This is pretty much a cheat code build. As y'all can see, I'm only on Apocalypse 23. So let's get it. Y'all about to see me uh, cheese it pretty easy. Uh, forgive me for this. Uh, loading times because I don't have a series X and I am doing a one shot video right now. So I am not going to do any edits as far as I know, and I'm just going to go straight through with it. So, uh, yeah, if y'all like it, let me know in the comments. If y'all can see some upgrades, let me know in the comments, uh, tweaks, concerns, or just, you know, like and share.
or dislike it. Y'all don't like it, actually. You know, that way I can improve on it. Let me know whatever y'all feel. But here we go. We're about to do Eye of the Storm. And I've soloed it even with a lesser build. Like the builds that I had at level 50 uh, was pretty much rocking this. And as y'all can see, I'm only an average gear score of 53. Outrider. So that'll show you too. This this has a lot more potential to go up. Okay, never mind. I'm average score of 55 now. But as y'all can see, like with the that that's just that's definitely increasing. Plus, I can level up my gear as well. My gear is also not fully leveled, you know, to where it could be. You know, that's a 55, 57, 57, 56, 53. 55, 55, and 56. So I could increase them some more to get more potential out of them, but let's go. But you always want to have final penance out to begin with to just get everything propped. But let's do it. Oh, what so the? It's the leader of the out, Activate that. What? Then you want to. But you killed him. Shots off. And I'll happily do it again. You want to make sure outrider. you hit crits. For Jakob. Because that's going to make everything just go up. And you don't have to spam the turrets all the time, the cryo turrets. You just keep keep them out. Make sure they're always out at all times. As you can see, it's shredding everything. Oh, look at Brew Mother. See, now I'm not doing as much damage as I could. Hold on, one of my turrets went away as well. Because that Brood Mother usually dies a lot faster. Plus, my turrets are not really aiming and focused like, fully on her. But I'm, I'm sloppy right now, so y'all gotta forgive me. But y'all still get the gist of this build. y'all keep seeing that little explosion that happens off me, that's because the fortress is activating. But technically, I don't really have to, you know, do much because this build is just like shredding through everything. And that's without me activating my fortress too. Because a lot of the times this build won't even let you get a chance to activate your fortress because it just shreds stuff so easily. As you can see, all I was doing was activating skills, and I hit him and just killed him with those skills alone, just activating. crawler just got shredded bro y'all seen them numbers from the turrets alone was hit for a million at one point I want y'all to see something. I can, I can afford to do this too. Look, 1.3 million currently anom anomaly power. Just with activating the stuff that I'm activating. And y'all see I paused it during the fight. 
and that's how confident you can be with this build that the turrets will just defend the hell out of you and just destroy everything. Like this is a like a super lazy, super cheese, super easy mode build. And that's why Technomancer, and this has been my main since forever, and I've always just pretty much cheesed this game with the Technomancer. Because Technomancer is goaded. But my second character is a Devastator, and I know Pyromancers have some really good builds as well. Uh, Trickster, not so much. Trickster kind of got the shit into the stick. But there's a pretty good build out there uh, from, you know, some streamers that made it happen. Even though you have to be playing, you know, a specific way, but... Then once your got comes out, we'll just manhandle him as well. Yeah, I gotta forgive my aim. This gun does like bounce around a lot while you're shooting it. But y'all wanna always make sure you're shooting the target and trying to hit the crits because that's just gonna increase the power even more, you know, and who doesn't want more power, you know? So yeah, if y'all just so happen to have this, now uh, anomaly builds are, are very hard to get set up because it's pretty much having the right gear, but even if y'all got some of this stuff, this build will still be incredibly strong. So don't worry too much about not having the the necessities or the necessary mods and stuff like that. As long as you can get the basics. And you know, I was just, I'm just activating this stuff because all of this stuff, you know, triggers more uh, boosts based on the build. But I know sometimes when you take your turrets and you restart your cryo turret by throwing them twice, that'll that'll have some downtime and it'll leave you open for a few seconds to take damage. So just be careful when and where you reset your, your cryo turrets. Now we're about to shred through you got. Now I'm going to stay right underneath his booty cheeks, bro. Right under his ass or right in his face. <laughs> because... Untamed power is gonna shred through him though, on top of all of the other stuff. Yeah, you wanna make sure you get crits? Look, look, look at that. Look at that. Easy as fuck. Leader is dead. For now. Shanna, do you see anything? I... I don't think so. But we're still alive, right? Kiss my muscles. I think you stopped... We shredded this... What the hell was that? How did it...